And with me now in the studio is Hamzat Lawal. He's a Nigerian anti-corruption activist and co-founder of the watchdog group called Follow the Money. Thanks so much for coming into the studio. David Cameron's overheard comments about Nigeria being fantastically corrupt. They were clearly unhelpful. But was there some truth in what he had to say? Well, in the past, we would say there was some truth in what he has to say, or what he rather said. But presently, we've seen a, a bit of reforms and institutional change where we now have strong poli political will to tackle our corruption issues uh, in, in Nigeria. So, but, but it's quite sad as, as a citizen and as Nigerians that uh, a world leader would say such a thing about our country uh, in respective of what is happening. As much as uh, there's a bit of truth in it, we still need more encouragement to be able to strive and, and build our economy and so we can compete with the developed economy. Because there's no doubt about it that, you know, it, on the international stage, Nigeria is considered to be corrupt. I mean, I think it's Transparency International has it ranked at something like 136 out of 168 countries, and Nigeria clearly needs to improve. But what is going to help improve the transparency in your country? What is it that is most needed? Well, what is most needed is access to information, which we call data, but not just data, but open data in a very timely manner where we can be able to access it from government institution so that we, this can actually direct the way we want to, the way development phase move. But what is also key is how can all this safe heaven, I call them safe heaven, uh, funds that has that has been sent illicitly from our country to developed countries like the UK, the US and other European Union countries. How can these funds come back to our economy so that we can use them at the grassroots level? Because it's not just about the national level, but what actually happens in the ground in Nigeria is key. And there has been some commitment, hasn't there, that, yes. some, that assets, and this is what was written down on, on paper the, as a result of this summit, that assets will somehow be returned. But commitments sometimes aren't worth the paper they're written on. That's what the critics would say. Do you think this summit has achieved anything so far? Yes, it has, because this is the first time where you see world leaders sitting together and discussing a specific topic, which is how to tackle corrup corruption in the globe, which is a welcome development. And what is also key is the fact that our government has now committed to the Open uh, Government Partnership, the OGP. This is quite key in tackling corruption, because now going back home, we will now sit down with government, civil society activists and the Nigerian people to draft a national plan. Not just a document, but how something visible, something we can achieve and something that the Nigerian people can contribute in. They could contribute to. They also have to trust it, isn't it? I mean, trust is a big, big issue in your country about trusting the powers that be, that they are going to move in the right direction. That's crucial, isn't it? Yes, it is crucial. That's why we call for dialogue, because we, as Follow the Money, we believe in dialogue, where we can create a space, an enabling environment where citizens and government can engage decisively. And this is informed by data. What about... Uh, the fact that I, I, one of our guests earlier actually was very positive. He said the tide is turning towards transparency. He's not just talking about Nigeria, he's talking about globally, about internationally. Do you feel that is the case or are we living in a, in a world that in many cases every country has a, has a degree of corruption that, you know, that the more modern uh, data that we're using, computers, et cetera, et cetera, it's easier, isn't it, to cover yeah. up what is, what is happening, what shouldn't be happening? Well, I would say that true... We're announcing that change and we're announcing that commitment. But what is also key is coordination. And beyond just committing on paper, we need to also see concrete actions. We need to see how other little colonies that has been controlled by the, by the UK... British become Virgin more Islands, open. Because like that, yeah. even the businesses, the businesses has to play a role. Who owns what, when and how? And how did you acquire this wealth? And how are you willing and committing to be able to ensure that this wealth go back to the people that are rightly theirs? Because now in the real, in the real estate sector in the UK, mo half, most of the buildings are owned by corrupt politicians from my country. How is the UK government able to ensure that they don't just re return what is rightfully ours, but how can we prosecute using open data these corrupt government officials? Hamza Lawal, really interesting to get your thoughts. Thanks so much for joining us here in the studio. Thank you.